Hi, I'm Carol Steele. When I was 12 years old, I was running over to Grandma Olson's house barefooted. I stubbed my toe on the porch. It hurt badly. The pain didn't go away, it just kept getting worse. My foot was all swollen so Mama took me to the doctor he told us to soak it in hot water and gave me penicillin shots. This didn't seem to help. It just kept getting worse. The doctor decided that Mama would have to give me a shot every three hours both day and night which she did but it still didn't seem to help. Dr. Steele came to the house and told us that I had blood poisoning in my foot. And that it was spreading. The only way to stop it could be to cut off my foot. Mama and Dad were just sick. After the doctor left, Dad said we are not going to let him cut off her foot. He called Bishop 2 and he came over. I was lying in bed too weak to sit up. Bishop 2 and Daddy gave me a blessing. As he gave me that blessing, I could actually feel the strength coming back into my body. Before Bishop 2 left I was sitting up laughing and talking to him. After that I just started to feel better every day. One day a piece of round bone worked its way out of my foot. The doctor had taken x-rays and he said that there were no broken bones. After that my foot got better. This will always be a testimony to me of how much my Heavenly Father loves me and the great power in a priesthood blessing. My mother was my primary teacher. When I graduated from primary, Bernice Painter asked me if I'd keep coming to be the nursery teacher. I taught in nursery one year and then the next year I taught the five-year-olds. I continued teaching primary for six years before I got married. I really enjoyed this and I learned so much. I enjoyed myself and this helped me to feel good about myself and have good self-esteem. This experience taught me so much. I learned patience and tolerance and I learned that kids don't always mind you. It taught me a great deal of things that I used as I got my own family. I'm real thankful for all the service that I put in. I know it was for my benefit and I appreciate and thank my Heavenly Father for this opportunity. It has helped me in my life and all the talks I gave when I was young have taught me to not be afraid. I can get up and do the things I'm supposed to now. It helped me with all the other things I did later in my life. Mama and Dad had beautiful voices and they sang in the ward choir. They encouraged Donna and me to join too. This was when we were teenagers. We all sang in the choir. I never was a very good singer but we had lots of fun singing and we enjoyed being part of the group. Dad and Mama took us to church and taught us the gospel. Donna and I often gave talks in church. We would also bear our testimonies. I have always been thankful for this. My stake president called me on the phone one day and asked me if I would give a talk in stake conference. Why would just about scarred me to death? There were so many people, hundreds of them. To add to my anxiety the prophet of our church, David Omake, happened to be in attendance of that meeting. I have no idea how I ever got through that talk. I don't remember what I said. What I do remember was the thrill that came from my head to my toes when the prophet of God, David Omake, shook my hand. It was after the meeting was over and he told me that I had given a wonderful talk. I will never forget that as long as I live. The prophet of God shook my hand and said my talk was wonderful. What a thrill. This made me have a very special connection with the prophet. A typical Sunday at our house was always going to church and Mama made a big dinner. We played around the house. We'd go over to Goshen to see Grandma and Grandpa steal about every Sunday too. Grandma Olson lived just across the street and so we went over to see her every day. We'd always go over there and play. I remember going over to Grandma Olson's house. She had these little berries growing on the vine. We'd go down her collar and bring up her bottles. The littlest bottles, the ones she made jam in, we'd bring them up and fill them full of berries and water and put lids on them and pretend that we were bottling fruit. They had a big pile of boxes, ammunition boxes they got from the war. There was a great big pile of them and we would play on them. We would climb on them and hide in them. We'd play hide and go seek. We played run sheepy run. We would play baseball in the street. We played Ginny if we didn't have a ball we'd take a stick and sharpen it on both ends. Then we'd hit it with a flat stick. We'd bat it and use that kind of like a ball. That's what we'd play Ginny that's what we called it. Then we'd get on the rail fences. Grandpa had a big cow corral with rail fences. We'd get on these fences and walk along the fences and see who could walk around the corral all the way. When we would get off balance and fall we would hope we would fall on the outside instead of the inside. This was because if you fell on the inside you'd get cow manure all over you. 
That was another fun game we made up. We made up our own games. We loved to play in the irrigation ditch. Many times we would dam off the water to make it deeper. This would get the farmers mad though. Friends It's kind of hard to tell about friends because you're with different ones at different times. First of all our gang was Colleen Munt, Dolores and Selma Whiting, Bonnie Belliston, Fawn Bailey, Shirley Richies, Connie Hill, Narlene, and Lucille Telly. After we got a little older we dropped off some of the younger ones and then it was Fawn, Bonnie, Narlene, Shirley, and my sister Donna was part of the gang. I was probably the youngest and Donna was the oldest. There were three my age and the rest of them were a year older and Donna was two years older. We always had a real lot of fun together. We always went together and had parties. We'd go to each other's place. We'd cut hair and put on makeup. And we'd put bobby pins in each other's hair and fix them different ways and do all kinds of crazy things. We just had a good time. We all went to church together. We were in the North Ward. That was our gang. A lot of their brothers and sisters came and joined us when we started playing night games and had the big bonfire under the telephone pole. Then it got so big that we had to move it over to the park everybody in the North Ward started coming. I remember Ellen Sudweeks, Dora Sudweeks, and a whole lot of other people. We played capture the flag and kick the can. The boys that I remember were Earl Morris, Morgan Williams, Glenn Whiting, Bob Williams, and Merle Whiting. They were older than us. There were just a whole lot of them everybody from the North Ward come and started playing when we went to the park. It was a lot of fun. The one that I called my boyfriend was Earl Morris. We didn't do a lot of things together alone we were just in a big group all the time but I thought he was the cutest.